We wanted to test this because we felt it would be more effective, but we also thought it would be safer. There are rare but dangerous side effects, as you know, of the serums like tamoxifen and raloxifene. And they are one of the obstacles, among many probably, that have re made the acceptability and use of breast cancer prevention pills very low in the United States. Only about 4% of you know, what's estimated to be 2 million women at least in the United States have agreed to take tamoxifen for prevention. And we did an experiment to prove that a new tool works and that it works highly effectively. We hypothesized a 65% reduction in invasive breast cancers, and that's exactly what we showed in this trial. At a median follow-up of a final analysis at th of three years, we were able to show that there was a 65% reduction in the occurrence of invasive breast cancer. We breast cancer doctors have been frustrated by the low use of tamoxifen for breast cancer prevention, considering that this is the leading cancer and leading cause of death from cancer in women on all continents of the world. We believe this has been a highly underutilized finding, and we understand that it's multifactorial. Why? We hope that this result will really spur doctors to reconsider some of the biases of why should a woman, a perfectly healthy woman, be given a pill which could have a downside. One has to consider over 200,000 women a year getting invasive breast cancer in the United States and about 50,000 of them dying each year, 40 to 50,000. We have to start thinking about is there a target population to prevent this. I think that it's time, as the editorial in the New England Journal of Medicine said today, it's time for the debate around prevention of breast cancer to be elevated, both by doctors, the public, and by women in particular. Um, we, of course, are aware that we would like to narrow the target population. And as yet, this trial doesn't narrow it. It actually broadens it. We'd like to be able to narrow it by looking for other markers. How do I know that you personally are going to get breast cancer as opposed to women like you? I'd like to know, because you'd like to know, is it you? Is it, are you the person that should take that pill? Or is it just a group of women like you? I, I think this is a discussion that should be, I, I think it would be, I, I think it's sort of somewhat irresponsible for doctors not to inform women there's a brand new, uh, you know, important result for the, tre for the prevention of breast cancer. Every woman should know that, and doctors should be one portal of education for women. You know, the doctor's office is the place that women go for their general checkup and the place they want to know if they how they're doing. And just like it, you know, not all doctors advise the patients correctly about the prevention and treatment of osteoporosis by any means. Not all doctors tell their patients, you know, even about mammography routine. They don't ensure that women, you know, hear the debate, understand the debate comply if they get to choose whether they're going to go into breast cancer screening programs, pap smear screening, calcium and vitamin D use, exercise, you know, lifestyle changes, body mass index control. Primary physicians are busy docs, um, but they've, they have managed to weave into their visits and their annual assessments a lot of preventative medicine and discussions around preventative medicine, and this is another one. And I think depending on the time and the level of belief, but at least the doc should read the paper, think about it carefully, and discuss it with their patients up to a point.